Hi, hello everybody. Welcome back again to another session of One Question a Day. The question that we are going to discuss is mandibular second molar with relevant diagrams. This essay question cannot be missed to read because it is more important for exams as well as clinical aspect also. Going into the answer, the mandibular second molar is supplements the first molar in its function, and but is much smaller than the first molar. Uh, the nomenclature in the universal system, the right molars will be denoted by 31, the left will be denoted by 18. International FTI, the right will be 47, the left will be 37, under the palmar rotation, 7 and 7. Chronology, the tooth is seen. The first evidence of the calcification is about two and a half to three years, enamel completion seven to eight years, eruption 11 to 13 years, root completion 14 to 15 years. The length of the crown is about seven mm, whereas the root length is about 13 mm. Observe the difference. One is to two nearly. Means your distal width of the crown 10.5 mm, whereas a shorter dimension it is about 8 mm. The meso distal width is larger than the length, that is a cervical occlusal length. So it is a short tooth, but a wide tooth. The labiolingual is 10, more or less that tooth of the visio distal. Going from the labial aspect, it is trapezoidal in shape. The buccal surface is convex, so the presence of a single buccal developmental groove. Whereas in first molar, you have two developmental groove separating the mesio buccal and the distal buccal cusp. The buccal grooves ends in the pit. You have a large mesiobuccal cusp and a small distobuccal cusp. You see the mesial outline to be convex till the mesial, uh, till the contact area, which is at the middle third. Okay, after which it becomes straight. And the cervical line is nearly straight with a small cervical dip along the furcation area. So the mesial outline is the buccal surface is initially convex from the cusp tip to the contact area which is in the middle third then it co follows a straight course then we have a straight uh, cervical line with a cervical dip then after we have a the distal outline from the cervical line we have a straight line to the contact area after which it turns convex so from the contact area to the cusp tip, it is convex. After which, from the contact area to the cervical line, it is straight on either side. You find the buccal groove separating the mesiobuccal, large mesiobuccal cusp and the small distobuccal cusp. You find the outlines of the other cusp, that is namely the distobuccal, uh, sorry, namely the uh, lingual cusps. Now, the roots, very important. The, we have two roots, the mesial and the distal root, right? The mesial root is, both are equally placed, okay? The roots are shorter and placed close to each other as compared to the first molar. Root trunk is short when compared to the mandibular first molar, very short. Whereas there it is four to five millimeters, here it is two to three millimeters. The mesial outline is convex entirely with a distal inclination seen in the apical third. Uh, the distal outline of the mesial root as well as the mesial outline of the distal root are concave, whereas the distal outline of the distal root is convex and the mesial outline of the mesial root is also convex. The distal root has a mesial, apical third mesial inclination. So the mesial root is inclined distally, the distal root is inclined mesially. So this is the buccal surface. Proceeding to the lingual aspect. Again, the crown is trapezoidal in shape with more convex structures with a lingual developmental groove separating the two lingual cusps uh, with two roots. So to go into deep, we have a prominent mesiolingual cusp and a distolingual cusp, which is separated by the lingual developmental groove. Both the cusp tips end in a prominent up angle in the mesial surface initially the root con till the root contact area from the cusp tip it is convex then follows a straight course to the cervical line which is more or less straight the distal outline is fully convex from the cervical line to the cusp tip okay. two roots again the mesial outline of the 
mesial root and the distal outline of the distal root sorry this yes convex the distal outline of the mesial root and the mesial outline of the distal surface is concave and the tooth exhibits a inclination at the apical third the mesial root is inclined distally and the distal root is inclined mesially as compared to the mesial sur uh, buccal surface the lingual surface shows the root trunk to be longer when compared to the buccal aspect mesial aspect the crown from this aspect appears to be rhomboidal in nature okay with a contact area at the junction of the occlusal and the middle third of the tooth slightly buccally the crown shows like your first molar a prominent lingual inclination from this aspect we find a prominent mesiobuccal cusp and a less prominent mesiolingual where there is no prominence of groove the buccal outline is uniformly convex whereas the lingual outline is uniformly smooth to mildly stri straight or mildly convex the cervical line is straight you can see the prominent mesial root from this aspect and there is a shallow developmental depression in the center in the mesial surface extending from the cervical line to the root tip the buccal outline is straight of the root the buccal outline of the mesial root is straight whereas the distlingual outline is convex okay going into the distal aspect again this is a rhomboidal structure very similar to that of the mesial surface except that the surface is small otherwise it is straight okay the outline buccal outline is convex with a short marginal ridge so that all the mesial cusps are seen mesiolingual and mesiobuccal cusps are seen the lingual outline is first initially from the cusp tip to the contact area it is convex then it follows a straight otherwise it is entirely the same The occlusal aspect, which is the same, you have to draw all the cusps for cusps. Mark the parts of the how the distal buccal cuspal ridge, distal buccal marginal ridge, distal triangular fossa, distal lingual cuspal ridge, lingual developmental groove, mesiolingual cusp ridge, central developmental groove, mesio triangular fossa, mesial marginal ridge, central pit, mesio buccal cusp ridge, buccal developmental groove. All this should be there. The shape is rectangular with groove nearly a plus shaped we have four prominent cusp ascending and ascending order mesiolingual mesiobuccal distolingual distobuccal the prominent grooves are the central developmental groove buccal developmental groove lingual developmental groove that runs across the marginal ridge the prominent marginal ridges are the mesial marginal ridge distal marginal ridge triangular ridges both the triangular ridges mesial and distal triangular ridges then we have individual cuspal ridges the prominent fossa, the central fossa, mesial triangular fossa along the mesial marginal ridge, distal triangular fossa along the, the prominent pit is the central pit. The root, we have discussed the pulps, we have two canals and contributed by four pulp horns, right? This brief content, you have to talk about the embrasures also. And that brings us to an end to the discussion on the mandibular second molar. Stay connected with this channel for another interesting question. Till then, happy learning.